Hi, welcome to Nasha's Art. Today I'm going to show you a step-by-step -step tutorial on how to create this beautiful ancient Egyptian scarab beetle. It is inspired by the heart scarab beetle placed on the mummy of Tutankhamun when he died. And if you want to know a bit more about why ancient Egyptians placed heart scarabs on their mummies, check the blurb down below. Today I'll give you tips and tricks and lots of detail on how to use either air dried clay or real clay that you will put in the kiln. Um, there are some very cool tricks, tools and slip that I will show you how to use. I also give you alternatives so that if you don't have clay tools you can still do this project anyway. So let's get straight to it but before we do please do like and subscribe. So I've got a cardboard circle and if we imagine that the scarab beetle will be about the size of the spoon and I've got a line down the center of my circle here. I'm just going to go over that so you can see it clearly. This is the central line that will help us to make sure our scarab is symmetrical. So let's imagine that this is our scarab beetle around the middle here. What we need is a wing template that will help us to create a ring in the wing in the clay, the same on both sides. So I've got an old piece of scrap paper here and I'm going to line that up with the central line and I'm going to just vaguely sketch in where I think the beetle will come, the beetle's body. Something like maybe that. So there we have half the beetle's body. There's the other half. Now what we need is the wing, one, one wing. We need to draw one wing shape how we like it. So I'm going to come out from here, I'm going to curve around because the wing is holding like a sun. So the sun would be about there. But we don't need to worry about that, I'm just putting it in so that we know where it is. So there's one bit of the wing. And the other bit of the wing needs to come around all the way to about here it comes out like that and then we're going to make sure that we stay inside so I can feel where the circle is I can even sort of crease the paper to see where it is can you see I'm creasing the paper there to help me know where the end of the circle is because my wing has to be inside of that so now I'm going to curve round making sure I stay within the cardboard circle that's behind. So this is going to be my wing shape. Pretty happy with that. And obviously there's another little bit here, but that will be made out of clay. We don't need to worry about that, but that's just so you know. So this is the wing shape we need. And we can cut that out and use that as a template for when we start the clay. I folded my drawing in half so that when I cut out the wing, I'm going to cut out two of them. So let's cut that out now. Make sure it's lined up. Sometimes it moves while you're cutting. I'm just going to make sure that I only cut the wing shape out so that I've got a clean template that I can use when I need it. Okay, so now we have our two wing shapes that will come either side of our scarab beetle and we can use those when we're ready with the clay. 
So the next step is to start forming the scarab beetle's body. I'm using a spoon to help model it, um, but you don't have to do that, that's just an option which sometimes helps. I like personally just pressing it and modelling it with my fingers until I'm happy with the overall sort of shape. Um, you can use clay that will go in the kiln for this, as long as you don't make the scarab beetle too fat. About a centimetre and a half thickness is probably the maximum you should really go. If you're using air dry clay, obviously it doesn't really matter. Um, it's only if you're putting it in the kiln that you need to be careful about the thickness so that the piece doesn't explode in the kiln. So I'm just sort of using my fingers and pressing gently around to kind of get the kind of shape I want. And then I can use toothpicks or little modeling tools to add in details of the scarab. <laughs> For the details of the scarab beetle, you could either use some actual sort of ceramic tools or improvise with things that you find around you, pencils, the edges of rulers or that sort of thing. So we want to make a little indentation along the scarab's body and I'm going to use a ceramic tool to then add a bit more detail to that. So the scarab has a kind of line that comes along like this and obviously the same on the other side and then once it meets in the center it goes down uh, to show where the wings you know beetles have a wing case don't they um, and the two outer protective wing cases will open and the actual wings will come out from underneath. So what we're doing here is showing where the wing cases separate by this line. I'm now manipulating the clay to make a little bit of a sort of head um, area for the scarab beetle. And you can see that it's obviously two separate pieces. So in a minute, I'm going to show you how to make something called slip. And slip is, I suppose you could call it clay glue. Um, it's simply just clay and water. Sometimes people add vinegar if it's real clay and not air dry clay. And the vinegar does help the clay molecules to bond to each other. So you can add a little bit of vinegar to it. Um, I'll show you how to make that slip so that we can attach this head to the scarab beetle. And once we've attached it, we can then go in with our tools and make little details. So you can see if I was to attach it like that, um, once it dries, it will just it will just fall off. We don't want that, obviously. So we want to attach it more permanently and this is how you do it. So here's a blob of clay in a little pot and I'm going to add just a touch of water to that clay and use any tool, a spoon, your fingers, whatever you like. And you basically want to mix the clay with the water um, so that the clay becomes the consistency of mm, like double cream. Um, so I'm going to keep mixing this for a little bit and I'll show you in a minute when it's reached the correct consistency. So like I said earlier, if you were using real clay and not air dry clay, you could add three or four drops of vinegar to that and it would help the clay really bond well. I'm not going to do that because this is air dry clay I'm using, but I'll show you the next step to attach the head. So what you want to do 
whether you're using air dry or normal clay is you want to score both pieces so I know the head's going to attach there so I want to score this area and make it rough and I also want to score the receiving area on the scarab by making it rough and scoring it, it helps one part to adhere better to the other. So let's just set that up so you can see what I'm doing. You can see I'm just scoring it there with my tool. And then I want to apply the slip. And you can see it's quite a creamy, thick consistency is great. So I'm going to pick up a little bit in there and I'm going to put it on this side. And then we can attach Now, when you attach two pieces, you don't just leave it like that. You also need to use a tool or your fingers to join it more smoothly. You can see that I'm going over that join where the two pieces meet and smoothing them over so that one joins onto the other. It's also really important because it helps the piece that you've just added on to adhere better to the piece you're adding it onto. And you'll have a really secure bond that won't crack and break or shouldn't do. Whether you fire it in the oven or whether it's just left to air dry. So there you are. We now can work on that head and get any other extra sort of shapes that we want on there. Sometimes it's a good idea if you want to work in the details just to wait a tiny bit for it to dry before you start doing the details. just like to fiddle a little bit and make sure that things are symmetrical or just how I want them. So now for the head, I'm going to squash it down a little bit. And I'm going to use my tool to make a sort of line, curved line going around the head to give it some definition. Again, you could use a pencil for this, you could use a kebab stick, a toothpick if you don't have these clay tools to hand. is quite forgiving you can sort of find objects and turn them into tools and that works really well when you look at some of the ancient Egyptian scarab beetles you can see that they have more detail on their heads but the detail is often sort of stylized so I'm going to indicate just a few of these stylized details so they seem to some of them have a little shape on their head like this like a U the letter U and sometimes they have sort of eye eye areas indicated so 
I'm just manipulating this tool gently to indicate a sort of indentation where the eye could be. And on the other side, I'm going to try and make it symmetrical as I can. And I suppose you can be creative in your own way with this, or look at a variety of ancient Egyptian scarab beetles and decide what you want on yours. Some of the ones I've seen have kind of little antennae type projections. So I'm going to have a little go at that using another tool. So I'm going to sort of separate that bit out. You see I cut like a little V at the front so that it ended up with sort of two little spiky bits, a bit like antennae I suppose, little antennae. I'm just going to work into those a little bit more, make them more prominent, and then I think I'll leave it like that. As I said before, if you're working with real clay, you just need to make sure that this is only about one and a half centimeters thickness. If it's a bit more, you can turn it over and kind of scrape out a bit of the body so that it's a little bit more hollow and not as thick. So that's one way to get around that. I'm gonna place the, the wings either side of it just to take a quick look and see how that would look so far. So remember we cut out our wings earlier and that's the sort of way they're going to look which is quite nice. We'll make the wings out of clay and we'll make the sun disc out of clay and we'll also make the little, there's like a little sort of another, another shape down here that we'll make particularly on Tutankhamun's um, chest piece if you Google his chest, scarab beetle chest piece, you'll see. Um, if you were doing this out of real clay, again, you might want to think about your backing also being made out of clay. So you literally roll out a flat piece of clay and you find an object that's circular, draw around it in the clay and cut it out. Again, you, you know, you want to be looking at something that sort of thickness. So about a centimeter maybe a centimeter and a half again okay so my next step will be now to roll a flat piece of clay and cut around the wings so I've got some more clay and I've flattened it out with my hands um, but it might be that at this point you use something like a rolling pin or the side of a bottle to roll it a little flatter and more even. So I've got a bottle here. I'm going to use it as my rolling pin. You can see I'm just pressing evenly along it and moving it from left to right so that I can start getting something more of an even flat piece. Now, careful, because sometimes it does stick to the bottom. 
if you're working with real clay and it sticks to the bottom, I sometimes just roll it out on a piece of scrap paper and that makes it a bit easier to pull off and, and manipulate. But I don't seem to be having the problem with this, so I'm just going to keep rolling it a bit more because I don't want the wings too fat, but I don't want them too thin either. With the air with the air dry clay, it's okay because I'm going to be I don't have to worry about it exploding in the kiln, um, and I'm going to use this cardboard as the back. Uh, with real clay, um, you might want to keep the wings fatter if you're not going to use a clay background circle. Right, so here are my wing templates and the good thing is I can put both of them on and cut it out, which is great. So, use a kebab stick or toothpick and just mark around your wings. carefully and then once you've done that you can use just a kitchen knife or if you have a ceramic knife use that to cut the shapes out so I've cut out my wings and it's now time to put them in the right place next to the scarab so I'm going to carefully peel them off and place them where I need them. Let's remove this one so that we can just cut it in the middle. So earlier I said I was happy and I was going to use the cardboard background but I've decided I don't like it. So let's actually make a clay circular base for it and that's good because if you are using real clay and not air dry clay this will be very useful for you. So I've rolled my clay flat as you can see and I'm going to use my cardboard template to help me um, cut out a circle, a clay circle. So let's place it on carefully, score around it and cut it out just like we did with the wings. Before we attach a scarab beetle to the clay base, we want to hollow out some of his insides so that if we were to put this in the kiln, it would not explode. So using a wire tool or I guess a spoon and working when the clay is a little bit dry so that you're not disrupting the pattern that you've made on the outside, gently scoop out some of the scarab beetles insides. You need to be gentle and patient and use your hand the other side to support the shape of the beetle so it doesn't completely go out of shape. Just pay, patiently scoop out until you've got a sort of indentation and nothing is too thick. Once you've done that you then need to attach it and it's the same process that we used before where we score using something sharp, um, score all the way along everything that's going to be attached, and do the same on the receiving surface, and then use the slip and attach it. Before I show you how to do the wing, I'm just going to show you what you need to do if you are going to put this in a kiln and you're using proper clay. 
So we know that the beetle is hollow inside, but we don't want trapped air in there. So just where these lines meet, I'm going to make a little hole. That little hole is very important because it will allow the air that heats up inside the beetle's body to escape so that it doesn't explode. If you want to be a bit careful, you could also do one right at the back where it's not going to be really noticed. But again, it will just help let out that air. Right, let's attach the other wing. So, as before, we need to score. And also score where the wing will go. The clay is still quite wet, so I don't have to score too carefully, but I will definitely have to score the side of the beetle because this part is going to attach to there. It's important not to let the clay dry out too much before you do this, uh, otherwise it won't adhere properly and your seams will crack off. So it's really important that you do this while the clay is still malleable and wet. Right, we've scored both sides. So now let's get our slip and paste it on. I'm going to put a bit of slip on here because that's going to touch the beetle's body. Okay, let's line it up and try and make sure that we get it as symmetrical as possible. If areas of the corners do dry out, just wet your finger a little bit with water and place it over, rub it over that area that's really dry. Um, but like I said before, you don't want to let the clay get too dry. Okay, so the position's all right, I think. It's now time to do the very important job of attaching the seams where everything's joined. I'll show you a little bit of that, but it does take a while. You have to be patient and do it properly. So I'll show you a bit in real time and then I will do some more in slow motion. Cut. Sorry, not slow motion, in a time lapse because otherwise this video will be extremely long. So I'm going to start by working on this seam here where the wing attaches to the beetle. I'll try and go closer in so you can see what I'm doing, but I'm kind of dragging a bit of the, the wing up onto the body and working over that seam with the tool. You can see that at first the clay is a little bit stiff, but you just work over it and use the tool or a bit of side of kebab stick and be patient and just really work at it until it's smooth. Use your finger to smooth out areas where you've pulled the clay.
And then you'll need to work around the edge where the wing meets the backing circle as well. So I'll show you just a little bit of that. I'll try and tip it so you can see what I mean. So you can see the seam there and I'm pulling down the edges and smoothing over like that. And I have to work all the way around doing that. Fill in any crevices again with the slip. You see there's a bit of a hole developing, so that's fine. Smooth the edges of the wings off with the slip as well, so it doesn't dry out as you're working, because you'll need to put patterns on them in a bit. And just go around working all the seams like this. this tool but you could very easily use a kebab stick or a toothpick for this and basically you just you're kind of scoring uh, into the clay so I'm going to try and make sure that this is symmetrical on both sides as much as I can and you are mark making a mark in the clay You're sort of pressing the side of the point rather than the very point itself into the clay and dragging it along to create the mark that you want. And so on, you complete those for the curves on the edge of the wing, I had a tool a bit like this, but you might be able to find something similar, maybe the edge of a hair clip, a curvy grip, the curved part of it, or a safety pin, that might work. couple of bits now we have the Sun here that we need to create um, so getting get some clay in your hands roll it into a ball shape if it's got any cracks just slip over them with the slip and once you've rolled a nice ball shape Press it down between your palms to get a disc. Manipulate it between your fingers to make it even and pleasing to you. And attach it there. If it's not big enough, you can either add more clay, you can squash it down a bit more. It's up to you, really. And of course, you need to add it, attach it in the same way as before using the score and slip method. So score it, score the space where it will go, and use a slip to adhere it in place.
There's also a little piece down here that, again, use the same similar method and create a little small piece there. And the last thing you really need to think about ahead of time before you either let this dry or fire it in the kiln if you're using real clay is how you're going to hang it or display it. So yes, you could always lean it against a surface, but maybe you don't want to do that. Maybe you'd like to hang it. And if you do wish to hang it, then of course you will need a hole through which you can string something in order to hang it. So I'm going to create my hole not too near the edge. In fact, I may even create two holes either side of that central line. You can see one there and then one the other side and then I can run some string through it, through one and then the other and make a little hook. That's probably the easiest way to hang your piece. Don't make the holes too small unless you're using fishing wire or something very thin but strong because if you are firing your clay in the kiln it will shrink and your holes will be tiny. So you don't want to make them too small but you also don't want to, to make them huge. So there we have our piece. Now you can just, be, if you're anything like me, you will probably spend another half an hour just fiddling and making things look extra perfect. So that's what I'll be doing now. Um, and I'll get rid of the central line that divides the two sides because we don't need that anymore. But that's pretty much what you need to do to make this. Um, do check out my second video where I'll show you how you can paint it if you were using air dry clay. I won't be showing how to glaze it, uh, that will be something that if you are using that clay you will have to work out. Um, but if you do use um, clay and you haven't got facilities to glaze, you can actually paint it with acrylic paint and varnish it and you'll get a pretty similar look to glaze. Um, so I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I will put the link to my second video just at the top. Uh, feel free to go on and, and have a look at the, the exotic colours, the Egyptian, ancient Egyptian colours I used to paint. And also I've got a lot of other wonderful ancient Egyptian drawing videos so do check them out. I'll put some of them up there as well and down below in the blurb. So I hope you love this tutorial. Please do like and subscribe. Um, your support is so much appreciated by me.